From what we've seen and heard on the internet, all UFO sightings and contacts with presumed aliens happen to people in an isolated way. But what if we told you that there was a case in which it wasn't isolated? What if an entire population made alien contact? Pay attention, because this is the case of an island in Brazil that was attacked by UFOs. This is Colares Island, a small Brazilian fishing community located near the Amazon Delta. It was in 1977 when the assistance of a military squadron was requested, led by Captain Yuranji Holanda. It turns out that strange lights were often seen in the sky on the island. At first, it was casual sightings like we hear today, but eventually these lights began to be hostile to the natives. People said that at night, they could see a strong luminescence that went through walls. Something similar to a powerful laser, it would point at the left pectoral, and later, burns would appear. There were even needle-like marks of small perforations. Captain Yuranji Holanda was skeptical of the whole situation, until the day that he and his team witnessed the flight of an object just above the car in which they were sitting. The object was shaped like a saucer and produced a gear-like sound. In a few moments, it blinked five times with a yellow light. Then it turned blue, and it disappeared into the night sky. This brought a team of specialists and photographers to the island to investigate the case. A register of the mysterious lights was kept, and more than 300 people were interviewed. Precisely in this research task, Holanda learned that the natives called UFOs Chupa Chupa because they believed they sucked blood, since the victims often looked weak. Mysteriously, 8 out of 10 affected were women, and the lights always focused on the left breast. Holanda confessed in an interview for a UFO magazine that he almost never believed it was real, despite seeing one with his own eyes and getting more than 100 pictures of strange lights in the sky. I felt, said Holanda, playing the role of devil's advocate, I was sent to deny what was happening on the island. In fact, he himself interviewed most of the interviewees. Most of the stories coincided, but there were some that said things out of the ordinary. One woman, for example, said that one night she was breastfeeding her child inside her house. Then she noticed the room temperature changing slightly. Then the walls turned bright red and the roof of the entire house became a kind of crystal through which the sky could be seen. That's when, she says, the light attacked her. Captain Holanda did not believe her, but even he could not ignore that the woman had the classic burns on her left chest, along with the dots of the presumed needles. The only explanation Holanda saw for this was that these things were taking blood samples. But this was contradicted when the numbers showed that 35 people were seriously injured and two were killed. In the interview for UFO magazine, Holanda confessed that he could not make any real progress during his exhaustive investigation. The only thing he could do to help the population was to evacuate them so that the island was largely uninhabited. Do you know what the worst part of all this was? Not that nothing substantial was achieved from Holanda's intervention, but that two weeks after the interview, he was found dead, hanging from a beam in his apartment. This death leaves much to be pondered. Perhaps he spoke more than he owed in that magazine interview. Or did he know more than he had told? It's a mystery that could only be solved by Holanda himself. And that secret died with him. <laughs>